Students, families, counselors, good morning or good afternoon, wherever it is in the world you are joining us. Thank you so much for joining StriveScan's virtual college exploration program. This program over the next few days is in partnership with the Colleges That Change Lives, CTCL. A few housekeeping items before we begin. First and foremost, you're encouraged to ask questions throughout the session via the Q&A button that you see on your screen. When you submit a question, it's sent to our panelists and he'll work to answer the question during the session and at the conclusion of the session as well. So a reminder, your camera and your microphone are turned off. So if you do have questions, you just have to type them in through the Q&A. This is one of 50 different panel presentations and individual information sessions that are uh, being run by this virtual CTCL program. We encourage you to sign up for the other sessions that run through Tuesday evening. When you sign up today, you received a barcode. You do not need that barcode for this virtual event. And we are recording this session and all of the sessions and those recordings will be made at strivescan.com slash virtual slash CTCL. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Miles. All right, thanks, Zach. Um, so my name is Miles Corcoran. I'm an admission counselor at Antioch College. And uh, thanks for joining. Uh, let's just get this presentation up real quick. Okay, so uh, Antioch College is a small liberal arts college as all CTL colleges are in uh, Yellow Springs, Ohio. Yellow Springs is uh, it's a small, it's a village uh, just outside of Dayton, about a half hour from Dayton, hour to Cincinnati, hour to Columbus. Um, so let's see here. Uh, so Antioch College was founded in 1850 um, by um, a group called the Christian Connection. Many of them were abolitionists. Um, they, uh, the college began operation in 1853. Horace Mann was the first president. Uh, I'm sure many people are familiar with him. He's uh, regarded as the father of the American public school system. Um, he was uh, a US representative from the state of Massachusetts, Massachusetts. And he coined the phrase, be ashamed to die until you've won some victory for humanity. Uh, he said this at the, ver at the very first commencement uh, of Antioch College. Um, and the college has, um, has woven this into its mission since then. Um, so the mission of Antioch College is to provide a rigorous liberal arts education on the belief that scholarship and life experience are strengthened when linked, that diversity in all its manifestations is a fundamental component of excellence in education, and that authentic social and community engagement is vital for those who strive to win victories for humanity. Antioch College will be the place where new and better ways of living are discovered as a result of meaningful engagement with the world through intentional linkages between classroom and experiential education. Uh, so academics are at Antioch are kind of built around these four pillars here of academic intersectionality, environmental sustainability, discussion based courses and experiential education through uh, through our co op program. Um, as a liberal arts college, we offer areas of study among the arts, humanities, sciences, and social sciences. Um, and through our self-designed major, students can uh, take an interdisciplinary, note, an interdisciplinary approach between these areas um, according to their own unique interests. Um, this picture here gives you a good idea of uh, kind of the typical classroom setting at Antioch. Um, you know, most oftentimes the chairs are turned inward to facilitate discussion. Um, not all classes are discussion based, but for the most part, they are. We do have some lectures as well. Students work very closely with their professors. Um, we do have a four to one student faculty ratio. So you get to know them on a very personal level. Um, even everybody at Antioch is even on like a first name basis. So you even call the president Tom. He's not Dr. Manley. It's um, so it's a very close knit community. So within the four academic divisions, this is kind of is like the breakdown of what you can do um, within that um, with the self design major. So you can even blend these different areas. Uh, so somebody can do uh, psychology along with environmental science, maybe to go into uh, how the, the psychological effects of, um, of being of a victim of, of displacement or something due to rising sea levels, things like, things like that. You can take it all kinds of directions, blending political science, et cetera. Um, so how the self-design major works um, is that uh, students, you know, of course you take classes, 
but you also figure out what you want to do through experiential education, as I mentioned, this co-op. So um, we believe that what you learn in the classroom is strengthened when you get to apply it to the real world. And then you go out into the real world, have all these amazing new experiences, and then you get to bring those new perspectives that you gain back into the classroom. So that's what this graphic shows here. So you gain your knowledge and skills in the classroom, and then you go out in the real world, and then you, and it's just this, uh, this cycle. So it really does create uh, uh, an environment rich for uh, academic discussion. Um, so you have students getting all these different experiences around the world and they come back to class. Um, so students do have three um, co-op experiences that are required with an optional fourth, but we'll get into more details that here in a minute. Uh, so students have a lot to gain from designing a major. It does put a little more responsibility on students than uh, just declaring that they want to do a, a traditional major. Um, so they get to envision and execute a project. Um, so they're developing these different skills by doing that. You're learning, you're doing self-directed learning, learning project management skills. And all of these are, are valued by employers and graduate programs. So it really does help set our students apart from, from other graduates. Um, so, so how students design a major. Uh, so they're introduced um, to Antioch's uh, curriculum through the Antioch Commons course. Uh, there are four different courses um, just among the four academic divisions, arts, science, humanities, social science. Um, and then they get to uh, meet with all the faculty and it kind of just gets gets them thinking in different ways of, you know, really what they want to do with their education. Um, take all your gen eds, uh, you know, figure out where your interests really are, because um, I know it's it is a difficult choice to declare what your major is and um, it just does seem a bit abrupt to uh, to ask a 17 or 18 year old to uh, to map out their future <laughs> right off the bat. Um, so you do not declare your major until halfway through your second year at Antioch. So by that time, you have two co-op experiences under your belt in all these different classes. Um, so when you when students launch their self-design major, they also have to have a statement of inquiry and that outlines the path. They work with their academic advisor um, to, to formalize that. So this is an example of um, what a student has done here at, whoops, sorry, uh, at Antioch. This is uh, Rachel Isaacson, uh, graduated class of 2019. Um, so initial interests were public policy, educational policy, and city government. So with those interests, uh, she decided to dabble in uh, Washington, D.C. as a media specialist. Uh, really just put those interests to work to see if that was the path that she wanted to continue on. And uh, so then the second co-op, it was a couple things in Columbus, Ohio, uh, worked as an intern at Columbus City Hall and also was a constituent liaison for Ohio State representative. Uh, then she decided to design her major as food systems and political economy is essentially a mix of the areas of study of political economy, public policy, cultural anthropology, and sustainability. So then um, Rachel uh, put her, did her capstone project as the political economy of public school lunches, a call for a cultural shift towards a healthy and sustainable food system. Um, that was developed even further uh, from her experience working at Mills Lawn Elementary School here in Yellow Springs. Um, she got to work with the school uh, and develop a, a more healthy lunch program. Uh, and her fourth co-op was uh, the optional bonus co-op was as a radio production assistant at WYSO, the radio station right off campus. Um, so here's some more examples uh, to give you a better sense of, uh, of how wide students can go with the self-design major at Antioch. Um, it really is all over the place. Um, I do recommend if you are still if you are interested in looking further in Antioch College, you can also check out uh, Colloquia. Those are our senior project, our senior project program that we have every spring at Antioch. You can look through um, 
a digital booklet on the website. Uh, it tells you all about the students' uh, self-designed majors, their capstone, their co-ops, all that stuff. Um, so another thing that students can do uh, with their studies at Antioch is uh, they can blend in a language and culture program into their self-design major as well. Um, so we require all students to have some proficiency demonstrated in another language. Uh, we offer Spanish and French. Um, so upon arrival at Antioch College, students have to take the oral proficiency interview. Um, and if they say they come in speaking German or anything for that matter. Uh, and if they're, if they meet the proficiency level, they can test out, they get the credit. So it is proficiency based for credit. Um, so if a student already does speak another language, whether it's one of the two we offer or another one, uh, they could, they would then, then would have the opportunity to co-op in uh, a country that speaks that language. Um, so generally students do a one or three year track though when they come in at Antioch. So uh, if your Spanish is not up to par when you arrive and you do the three year language track, generally speaking, students are prepared to go to a Spanish speaking country uh, for their last co-op. Um, so we touched a little bit on co-op um, earlier. So what co-op really is, it's uh, I guess the shortest way to put it is like a, an immersive internship. Um, it is meaningful work. Um, it has to be meaningful to the students. Um, it's up to them how they want to go about it. Um, students can do what we call, a, they can go wide or go deep in their co-op experiences. Um, so going deep would be, uh, for example, a student knows they want to go to law school and they're they've just they've known that for a long time so then they continue they will just do all their co-ops that are law based and if they do that approach they can get bigger and better co-ops off the prior experience that they they have had um so or the other way is kind of doing a wide approach just trying different things uh because that's a co-op is also a great way to figure out uh, if your chosen career path is something that you actually would be happy doing. We've had students that have um, thought they wanted to do something in particular, then they go out in, in the real world on co-op and they realize, you know what, that's actually not for me. It's better to find out your first and second year of college than to, to graduate and with degree and going down that path. Um, so uh, in the a co-op lasts over 12 weeks. So for an entire quarter, students are living and working somewhere else in the world. Um, and it is for credits. Uh, so really, generally speaking, the only thing that students really do is their, uh, is really do like a co-op journal, stay in touch with their, their uh, co-op uh, faculty advisor. Um, so I'll show you a quick YouTube clip here from one of our co-op faculty members here. For educating experientially, I would say that Antioch is at the top of our game in terms of bringing students not only experiential opportunities within their classes. All over campus, I would say our campus is really a learning laboratory. Students are engaged everywhere from the farm to the studios at WYSO radio station. We see them out at the Japanese Tea Garden, over at the Foundry Theater doing their work there. We have students working at foundations, nonprofits, successful business and companies, and looking at what that feels like to be out in the world, being a part of a real team, making purposeful projects come to reality. So then when our students come back to campus, they're even more focused and decided upon how they're going to own their education moving forward towards that trajectory. Looking at their interests and then seeing how does that translate from a classroom into a professional organization. And I'd say the program is really interested in integrative learning, bringing an opportunity for the full person to find meaningful pathways during their time at Antioch as a student and beyond. Um, so here are some examples of some co-ops that students have done in recent years. Uh, students have 
gone all over the world, uh, every continent so far except for Antarctica. We have plenty of students that go uh, co-ops in Latin America. There's one in California, a student in Alaska. A student uh, did um, a media arts film-based co-op uh, between LA and Mexico. Um, students have gone to Japan. Um, and then there's one working as a refugee and immigrant center um, services employee in Houston, Texas. Um, so, um, but it really runs the gamut. Uh, we have a huge database of co-op jobs available um, and students aren't even limited by that. Uh, they can even, uh, if they have something in mind, they come up with some things, uh, they can bring that to their co-op advisor and potentially make that uh, into a permanent uh, co-op job with the college. So uh, Antioch's campus is uh, very small. We are an intentionally small um, community. Uh, the student body is about 100 students. There will be about uh, 80 students um, on campus or remote doing, taking classes this fall. The rest will be on co-op. Um, we have a vast array of, of student organizations, um, you know, different things, different kind of hobbies or for uh, various identities. Um, there's really something for everybody here. Um, uh, environmental stewardship is a, is a huge aspect of Antioch College. As I mentioned, it's a large part of our uh, curriculum. Um, and um, so we have uh, renewable energy sources that offset much of our, our use. Uh, farm to table dining, all that, uh, WYSO right off campus, shared democracy. Um, so the Antioch community, um, we have about 60% of students uh, come from in state, uh, about the rest of the other 40% are from out of state. Uh, we get many from Texas, uh, West Coast, Chicago, usually uh, larger cities. Um, and uh, but for student organizations, there uh, like for instance outdoor club, chess club, anime club. We have different we have intramural sports that pop up. Um, you know I've seen basketball, soccer, and volleyball. Um, picture here in the wellness center. Um, that's uh, we have on the on the left there is a game in the uh, wellness center. Um, and, uh, but most student organizations work in the um, West End. It's like our student unions where we would have live music, uh, karaoke nights. Uh, there's various speakers that come to campus. There's always something going on. Um, we have uh, art exhibitions in our um, Herndon Gallery, um, students, faculty, and staff. And we also have uh, exhibits from, from various artists around the world. Um, uh, so, a little bit of information on our sustainability. Um, we received um, numerous awards for our sustainability practices. Um, our farm to table dining program has uh, been recognized. Um, we, all of our food in our kitchens made from scratch. Um, during the growing seasons, uh, a lot, uh, about a third of the produce uh, served in the kitchen comes right off the farm. Um, it is uh, primarily staffed by students. Uh, we only have one full-time staff member and that's the farm manager. Um, so students can work on campus as, a, or I'm sorry, work on the farm as a campus job or even a, a co-op if they didn't feel like running across the globe. There are plenty of local opportunities for co-op as well. Um, the farm is integrated into our classrooms. We call it a learning laboratory. So even a lot of the dye that uh, is used in the science class, science labs comes right off the farm. Um, and um, it's a, it's an organic farm. It's all internal. We don't, we, it's never sold off of campus. Um, but so for the rest of the food that doesn't come off the farm in the kitchen, we get from other local sources for the most part uh, farms and other sources around Dayton, Columbus, and Cincinnati. Um, and uh, let's see what else. Uh, a lot of students also do work in the kitchens as, as well. Um, so a little information about uh, our sources. Um, a lot of the, the eggs and everything too come right off of campus farm. Um, 
So uh, we have a thousand acre nature preserve that is uh, adjacent to campus. That is uh, also um, what we refer to as a living laboratory. Um, science classes have gone out there for field research. Uh, the picture on the left is uh, the Yellow Spring that the town is named after. Um, the Glen Helen is loaded with, uh, it's about, I think it's 20 some miles of footpaths, uh, lots of caves and rocky formations. It's a uh, it's a really nice place to go hike. Um, it's a huge attraction to for tourists to Yellow Springs as well. Um, but uh, what else with the Glen Helen? We also have um, the Raptor Center that students would have access to. It's uh, where they rehabilitate birds of prey. So it's open to the public to see owls and hawks, eagles. Um, so students have opportunity to uh, to work with them as well. If that was something of interest. Um, WYSO as uh, the radio station I mentioned earlier. It is right off of campus. It uh, started in the 50s by Antioch students and then uh, grew to what it is today, uh, broadcasting 50,000 watts of power 24 hours a day, um, reaches the greater area around here, southwest Ohio. Of course, you can also listen online at WYSO.org. Uh, programming varies uh, quite a bit. Um, very eclectic uh, music programs along with uh, plenty of talk radio. Um, so Antioch College has uh, had shared governance uh, since the 1930s. Uh, these are democratically elected bodies uh, made up of students, faculty, and staff. Uh, we have community council, which we also call council, and college council. Um, uh, so our students have a lot more say in what goes on at the college than uh, how a lot of institutions operate. Um, and uh, so we allow, we believe that uh, giving our students more agency uh, over their education and the institution that they study at uh, is, is very important. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the, in the, in the chat box. Um, the Wellness Center was renovated in 2012. Uh, it's included in your student fees if you are to come to campus fully loaded weight room, uh, cardio machines. Uh, we have a competition length swimming pool. Um, you can do yoga classes, salsa, things like that. Um, it's really something for everybody uh, in there. We have personal trainers as well, students that have access to. Um, it is open to uh, the public as well. So, uh, you know, uh, villagers also uh, kind of work out there too. Uh, so Yellow Springs, I mentioned it a little bit earlier. It's a town of about 3,500, uh, but it does have a very active downtown. It is a bit of a tourist destination, so there's always something going on. Um, it's all local shops and restaurants, aside from a subway and a gas station, everything else is locally owned. Uh, lots of boutique stores just tucked away in alleys, a few coffee shops, uh, comic book store, bookstores, record store. Um, so there's a lot of stuff, plenty of festivals around the year, live music. Um, so, and it's only, downtown's just like a five, five to 10 minute walk, depending on how fast you walk uh, from campus. Um, and the college does have strong ties with, with the village as well. The picture on the right is of uh, Clifton, the Clifton Mill. It's just outside of town. It's a, uh, it's a restaurant. So they also have a huge like, uh, Christmas light show, um, well known around the area each year. Um, so a little bit about the application. Um, our application is free on the Common App. Um, we look for students that have a strong academic record, some, some foreign language study, in four years of English, math, science, social studies, typical. Uh, we look for students that are well rounded, you know, uh, if a student just has, uh, just say they have a 4.0 GPA, but they don't have anything else to offer, you know, that doesn't look as good as a student that uh, maybe has a, is not as strong a GPA, but they're, you know, well involved and everything, things like that and um, in the community and extracurriculars. Um, but what we require uh, is an essay, a couple of academic recommendation letters, transcripts, secondary school report, you know, from the counselor. Um, portfolio, if you intend to study the arts, um, test scores are optional. So we do 
accept the ACT and SAT, but we do not require them. Um, and, uh, and if a student is to supply a low test score, um, along with a strong GPA, the test scores would just have no effect. Um, we, might, we potentially would ask for an interview. Um, I always recommend uh, volunteering just to do interviews if you apply to Antioch College. It can always help, it basically just allows us to get to know you better as an applicant. Um, we also provide the questions ahead of time. Uh, we don't try to trip you up. Um, so provide you the questions so that you can form your best answers. Um, it's pretty much a conversational interview um, and really uh, allows me as a counselor to get to advocate for you uh, more efficiently. Um, and we review our applications holistically too. So, and what I mean by that is we look at everything equally. So transcripts are worth just as much as essays and vice versa. Um, so we believe students are much more than just numbers, you know, test scores or GPAs. Uh, life circumstances uh, obviously are a factor and they vary for, for all individuals. Um, we offer uh, early decision one, two, and regular decision priority. And after that, we're enrolling admissions. So we read applications into the summer. Um, and uh, so as private college, you know, we do have a higher sticker price, but we are committed to affordability. Um, we, as end of 2019, we rolled out the uh, Antioch Works program. Um, so uh, we meet 100% of admitted, or, I'm sorry, we meet 100% of financial need for all students and 100% of students admitted receive financial aid. Um, now with Antioch Works, uh, that allows all students who are eligible for the Pell Grant to receive full tuition scholarships. Uh, that also does guarantee a few other things. Um, these students are guaranteed campus and community-based work. Uh, they're guaranteed uh, an international experience. We do have some, some aid to help students uh, with extra need to get there. Uh, we have some fellowships available. Um, and we also offer a launch placement after graduation. So we would help, the co-op office would help the student find employment after graduation. Um, so that uh, wraps up the presentation. I'll be happy to take any questions if anybody has any. And of course, I'll drop my email in the chat. Uh, if anybody has any follow-up questions they might think of later. Um, oh, we have a question. Um, yes, we do only offer undergraduate uh, degrees. Try and see if I can drop my email chat. Well, uh, anybody doesn't have any other questions, I suppose this uh, wrap it up. Uh, here we go. Um, any plans to get bigger? Um, yes. So um, the college is uh, planning to grow slowly. Um, when we we had split from Antioch University in 2008. The college had reopened independently in 2011. Uh, the plan is to grow very slowly to maybe a few hundred or so. Um, we want to remain small uh, and have that, uh, maintain that uh, um, student faculty ratio. We don't want it to get much bigger than that.
thank you so much, Miles, for uh, spending the time to share this information. And students and counselors, thank you for tuning in as well. Uh, as you close this box, a quick four question survey is going to appear. So we do ask for your feedback. We encourage you to sign up for more CTCL presentations at strivescan.com slash virtual slash CTCL. And the recordings will all be made available at that exact same website. Thanks everyone, have a great day.